so then how 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 can an artist position themselves in order to look attractive to these sync libraries yes um so it's it's funny i've seen a lot of people try to fit th their music into sync and i've actually seen more success by trying to fit sync into my music um that's what i teach at sync beast is hey we want to approach the game from a place of validated inspiration and by validated i mean it doesn't make sense to write any particular style of music or produce any type of music that brands don't want and the fastest way to do that is to watch a lot a lot a lot of ads um, preferably ads that are airing today or within the last six to i guess you could say 18 months uh, the ad industry in terms of um, uh, cultural rel relevance it, it tends to be behind the curve a little bit six six to twelve months but that's not to say that there's not good you know validated references that you can find uh, in spots that are one and a half two years old right it just all depends on how fast the culture moves how fast music is moving and changing um, so I would say watch as many ads as you possibly can. Um, don't watch Selling Sunset. Don't watch, you know, reality TV because that's going to be your more low dollar sinks, right? It's going to be your lower quality. Oh, I know this is fake. I watch Teen Mom and I hear a, a, an interstitial song between two scenes, a transitional song. And you're like, oh, I know this is not real, right? Um, at least that's that's my experience and i think that's also the perception of the general public too they they will watch a, a tv show and and know that it's like not a real song um quote real so um yeah looking looking to capture that essence of you know those big brand ads that that really inspire you right and i and i know if if you're new to this game that might be kind of a stretch right because you may be very well versed in writing listening music or music based on your emotions or or writing from your heart uh that's where a lot of people get inspired and in, you know in this musician slash songwriter slash producer slash composer whatever you want to whatever you want to call yourself top liner artist um, a lot of people get inspired first and foremost from their heart and that is the opposite of what we do at sync beast that's that's the opposite of what my strategy of where my strategy starts it always starts from a place of purpose intention and validated reference material or or validated um value right we 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 know that if we watch a big brand ad and we do this every single week inside sync beast by the way it's every friday we have a, a call called weekly heat so that we can get an ear to the ground and see what's licensing right now and we get on a group call and we watch the ads and we tear them down together so that we can take everything that's working now into our own work right like that is how we do it that's how we train our brain that is how we train ourselves to remove our ego remove the heart remove the the emotions on the sleeve at you know in the very start of it right because we want to accept the stuff that people are paying for first and then put our heart and soul into it we want to put our own fingerprint we want to put our own sound to it um, because like i always say at sync beast we write sync friendly tracks songs that behave well for sync wrapped in authentic spotify major label production whatever believable production whatever you want to call it uh that is what we do we we write machines that work really really well for picture but sound like something that you would find on a discover playlist on spotify or something like that um so those are i guess that is the crash course of 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 what I teach people to do and the things that I hang my hat on, uh, that's just wor what's worked for me. You know what I mean? Positioning my music in that way saying, okay, I'm not just going to, I'm not just going to write, you know, whatever I feel like, and then just hope it fits in the sink. I'm going to fit sync into my wheelhouse. I'm going to look for ads that do what I do. And then I'm going to fit myself, you know, uh, fit that into myself. I'm going to fit sync into me. Um, now, if you already have music that is out, um, you know, I, I would I would be very careful about how much time you spend pitching that. To be honest, um, I don't I don't think it would be a lost cause. I think there you would you would find that there's a lot to learn by pitching that stuff that already 
is in existence. Uh, but I, I, I'm in the business of shifting the odds into my favor. And that is not it. I mean, that's like serving someone, you know, they, they want a sandwich and you're serving them a pizza. Good luck getting them to buy your pizza, right? Because they want a sandwich. So you really have to think about it in simple terms like that. Um, simplifying it for myself, that's what has, has kept me in the game for so long is, you know, I'm, I'm not going to offer anything to the market that they don't want. It just does not make sense. We have to have that business mind at, at the forefront of it and then let our creative instincts kind of execute and bring that all together. Wow, man, you just, I think you completely transformed a lot of people's thoughts because, you know, one of the things, I mean, it, for real though, because a lot of people, they they do, they want to express themselves from the heart, like you said, you know, and going from that is, and how you put it where um, it's better to fit sync to my music than music to sync, I think is a really good way of putting it. Like you have to make a product that's viable um, as a, from the, from the, from the onset, you can't just fit your, you can't, you, I think it is as a bit of a hard thing to fit your music into sync. I think that's really good. So a couple follow-up questions to that. Um, the first one is where can someone go to find all these high quality ads? I mean, you know, nowadays, I mean, you know, most people under 30 don't have a TV. Um, you know, there is obviously like YouTube ads, I guess, and other things, but these high quality ads that you're studying, where can someone go to find them? Like, I, I mean, I, I imagine there's like truck ads and, you know, I mean, there's ads for everything, but like these, these, uh, you know, to study the stuff that's relevant right now, as opposed to, you know, the, the reality TV shows, where would someone go to find those ads to study? Yeah, this is great. Uh, number one, y'all, uh, remove your ad blocker. I don't, I, I, no excuses, right? Remove your ad blocker. The most valuable thing you can do as a as a sync producer, as an ins a aspiring sync producer, as an aspiring composer, remove your ad blocker. Why would you well, – <laughs> I'm getting passionate here. But why would you uh, deprive yourself of the opportunity to see what's working now, right, for for what the, the added comfort or speed or efficiency of your workflow watching – you know, cringy meme videos, you know, midday, like it, I would rather be bombarded by ads and it helped me in the long run, even if I'm just taking it in subconsciously, right? You know, ads are, are a pee break to a lot of people. Um, pardon the, pardon me being crude there, but, but they are, they get up off the couch and they go to the bathroom and then they come back and hope their show's back on. Right. Um, you need to be the person with your antenna up constantly. You need to be the one who doesn't take the pee break. You need to be the one who has Shazam. I wish. I, I wonder if you could see my phone. Uh, go that's, a little to the right. Uh, oh yeah, that's well that icon. It's too bright, but that icon that I'm pointing at is Shazam. Oh, you so keep it on your dock. I keep it on my dock. So right when I open this up, I, can, I can swipe you move up. It, can you move it to your. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm totally butchering this little. Uh, this little tutorial here. Yeah, bring, the, bring um, the iPhone closer to your face. There we go. All right. All right. So we got that. My million notifications. If I swipe up, my very first, I'm right handed and this is on the right side of my screen. So my very first icon in my dock is Shazam. So easy access for when I'm at Target, right? Like, I, again, I. I <laughs> I live, eat, and breathe this stuff, right? It, it's I want to make it as easy as possible for me to get as much inspiration. So um, that would be my most valuable move. It, it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't really. Yeah, it doesn't cost you any money, and it doesn't really cost you any effort too. It's a very low effort way. You know, delete your ad blocker, get Shazam or something on on the at the just at like on the on the rip, right? Like you just want it. You just want to pull your phone out, like out of its holster and just go, bam, right? You want to grab that reference. So, um, I think I'm derailing a little bit from your initial question, but I just wanted to get that out first. Like there, there are a few ways, but, um, yeah. Do you, do you want to remind me of, of your initial question so I can kind of bring it back around? Oh, it's just, yeah. Where do people go to find high quality ads? Got it. Perfect. Perfect. So that, that answer, that first answer was how you deal with it in the wild, right? Now, how do you actually force yourself to do it? I'll, I'll tell you how I do it. Um, number one, like I said, every week we in Sync Beast watch ads, and we go to ispot.tv/browse. Okay, and I, I I 
teach you how to do it in my book as well, Tracks That Sync. It, it gives you an entire challenge on finding ads and extracting value from it. So if that's something that interests you, grab it. Uh, it's like 99 cents on Kindle. Like I just try to make it super easy, super low, low barrier to entry there. So ispot.tv slash browse. That is the, that is the Holy grail for me because on the side, on the, uh, the left side in the nav bar, they have categories. So you can look through categories of, um, uh, kind of like what you were just saying, Banner, like you can look at automotive, you can look at retail, you can look at pharmaceutical, you can look at nonprofit, but you can also look at highest paying ads, big spenders, longest on air. See, you catch my drift? Like there, there, are, there are ways to validate in a deeper sense than just saying, oh, this is on TV, it must be good, right? Because who knows? Who knows if, if the thing that you're looking at is... $15,000 or $50,000. That's one five versus five zero, right? Like that's a big difference. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, but I, I would say that that is, that is the number one way, right? To, to actually force yourself into watching ads. Now, um, the other way that I do it is I go to large, large, large YouTube channels who just kill you with ads right so for like example for who, like yeah who give me an example of that. yeah so like john tron uh if you ever watch john tron videos those are riddled with ads the, he'll have four or five and i'm not just talking about the shadow legends stuff up top you know his promo of the sponsor for the video i'm talking you're watching 10 minutes in you get fed an ad and you're like oh man like i just want to watch the, the the funny video right so I, I go to, you know, channels like JonTron or Dude Perfect or like all these BS things that get fed to you when you don't even watch them, right? Um, and they're usually going to be littered with ads, riddled with ads. So um, I just go through and the functionality of those ads on YouTube is they force you to watch them if you, if you uh, fast forward through the video. So if you skim through and you scrub, chances are you're going to trip one and then an ad's going to be forced to you. And I'm always praying that it's like a short 15 second ad so that I get another one right after it because boom, I've just, you know, daily double, right? Like I just, I just got my, my double dose of that. Um, and the, the coolest thing is, um, if you're in an incognito window, um, I don't know if it works for everybody, but it, it works for me. If I'm in an incognito window, I, I refresh or I shift refresh on Mac and it like clears cache and stuff. Um, it shows me it, 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 it tends to show me the same amount of ads. Like usually you can train YouTube to like desensitize uh, or, or not show you as many ads based on how often you watch. Um, so yeah, if I'm in like a, a, an incognito window and I shift refresh, I can usually hit all the same points in the video and get fed even more ads. And, um, and yeah, I just, I just kind of rack them up that way. You know what I mean? That's, it's, I just, uh, there's this really cool thing that I do is when I'm fed an ad on YouTube, when I'm like feeding myself ads, which is actually harder than you, than you might think. Um, I've been trying to find ways to like contact YouTube and, and just ask them like, how can I feed myself ads like constantly? Cause it can get hard. Um, you, you'll see what I mean if you spend, you know, 15 minutes a day doing it, but there's this cool thing that I do. Um, when I'm doing this, you know, I'm, I'm on John Tron and I'm forcing myself to see an ad, I, and I like it, you know, I only have two to three seconds to pause it sometimes because it goes by quick and then you never see it again. What you can do is you can pause the video and you can right click and at the bottom of the, the drop down menu is stats for nerds. And when you bring that up, the video still paused, it'll bring up a little console window and it kind of looks, you know, it's got some, it looks pretty crude. But one, on the first line, there is a series of um, digits that you can copy and paste and then put after the watch question mark V equals in the URL. I know this sounds so wild, but you take it and you replace that little ID, that identifier, and it'll take you right to the ad so you can then have it on demand, right? So you can um, bookmark it or you can do whatever with it. I mean, I'm not going to suggest you do anything illegal with it, but, um, you know, that is, <laughs> I know this sounds so, so I wish I could just share my screen and show you, but, uh, you know, the, the, the point of that is I'm extremely obsessive over 
how can I keep this reference in my world, right? So it's the same mentality with the Shazam deal. Like I'm trying to get Shazam to be right out, you know, I can just get it right off the rip, right? I, I, I get my face ID, I open my phone, I click Shazam, I get it, and boom, I got my reference and it saves in my Shazam library. And then it'll go to my Apple Music library. Um, it's, the it's the same thing with this YouTube ad thing. I, wa I wanna hear it, I wanna listen to it, I wanna feed it to myself, then I wanna pause, I wanna grab the ID from the Stats for Nerds, and then I wanna put it in and I wanna watch it two or three times, you know, not too much so that I don't risk copyright infringement and rewriting it, but um, yeah, that that's my workflow. I know, I know it kind of sounds a little deep, but um, I'm just extremely efficient about how I how I get my my references and I get my inspiration material. Right. I think you have to be the first person I've ever talked to who's actually telling people, "No, I watch all the ads." <laughs> there you go. Well, I hope everybody listening to this like starts, you know what I mean? Cause there's yeah. just too, there's too much money to be made, too much opportunity and too much untapped potential in your world. You don't even know it. You don't even know what's out there for you. Right? So until you hear something, until you force yourself to listen to it enough, right? Um, you know, you'll never know if you can make it or not. And, and you, you, you absolutely you absolutely deserve that opportunity, but you have to be the one to give it to yourself. And, you know, in, sync inspiration is not necessarily going to just fall into your lap. Hence why we see so many people getting into sync and they, they burn out after three days because they're like, man, I don't I don't like doing this stuff. And it's like, man, you're not starting from a place of inspiration. You're not starting from a place of validated territory. Right. Yeah, maybe uncharted, but like that's what makes it fun you get to open up new possibilities for yourself so i you know to to that end i i hope everybody takes that bit of advice if you if you take anything away from this conversation delete your ad blocker and start feeding yourself start feeding yourself ads on the regular like 15 minutes a day is all it takes um and if if you don't if you don't like that then go to ispot.tv slash browse and you have a wealth of inspiration